Hello and welcome to this video. So you'll see straight away that we're no longer in the notebook. I've created a new file in the root of our code directory called ma underscore sim.py. And what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to run a pair through a load of different combinations of short and long moving averages. Now there'll be a bit of typing in this video, so I'm going to do some cut and paste again of code that I've pre-prepared so I can keep the video fast. Of course you can pause and copy the code or take it off GitHub, but it's going to run too long if I type all of this code out. The good news is we're not really seeing anything we haven't already seen inside the notebook, so it should all be fairly easy to understand. So in masim.py where I am here, at the top we're importing pandas, utils and instrument. I've made a function here, which we've seen before, which is the isTrade. And then we have a second function here, which is extraordinarily simple. It's called getMACol, that just gets the column name for a data frame for a given moving average, so that'll return ma underscore and then the name. And now another function here called run, and we have here a pair name defined, pound and yen, a granularity of h1, and now we have a list of the short length moving averages of 8, 16, 32 and 64, and a list of the long moving averages 32, 64, 96, 128, 256. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a script here that's going to simulate every combination of these moving averages and give us the gains or losses for the pound Japanese yen on these. So looking in the run then, the first thing we need to do is we need to get our pair from the instruments pickle so that we've got the pip location and the details and things like that. And the first step in our journey of running this simulation, and again we're just basically taking the code from the notebook, is we're going to write a new function, and that new function is going to be a function to get or load our pricing data. So I'm going to put this new function here and call it getPriceData, and we'll send in the pair name and the granularity. And as we did in the notebook, our first step there will be to read in our pickle and get from the utils the data file name, get a data frame with our pricing data inside. The next step again is to do what we did inside the notebook, that's to convert all of the columns to numeric that aren't time or volume because we had that problem with the string data. And then last but not least, now we have our pricing data, we can return our pricing data frame, but just with the columns that we need for our analysis, which of course were the mid prices. And in fact, for this script here, we don't even need the, the high, the low and the open prices because we're only using the close and we don't do any plotting. So now we have a function that's called get price data. So we can test out this function down inside run just to make sure that it's working. So down here we can say price data is get price data, pair name granularity, and then we'll just print price data dot head and have a look at this in the console. So if I type python ma underscore sim dot pi, we get our data frame with the time and the closed prices. Okay, so the first part's running. The next thing we want to do is we want to process our data so that we can calculate the moving averages that we're looking for. Now in the notebook we calculated two moving averages. This time we want to calculate all of these moving averages and all of the unique moving averages because you'll see that 32 and 64 appear in both of the lists. So we're going to write a function called process data that's going to take in our short moving average list, our long moving average list and the price data that we've just got. And what we need to create is we need from these moving average lists to create another list with just the new unique values inside. Now if you want to make a list from two other lists, you can just add them together with the plus sign. If you want to get the unique values, you can do something called making a set. So if I say that our moving average list is equal to set of adding these two lists together, that will give me a list of the unique values in the two lists that I send in. And now the code that we had in the notebook is exactly the same. We're going to loop through each of the moving averages in our list. Then we're going to get our column name from the function that we wrote previously at the top here. And then we're going to calculate the moving average for that particular value of MA. Last but not least, we can then return the price data. And just as I did before, I'd like to test this one out. So under price data, where we get it, we're now going to reset price data to be the processing of our data with our two uh, lists for the MAs and the price data. And now we can print price data dot head and we should see all of the moving averages on there. Before we do that, I'll change this to tail so we don't see a load of NAs. And now into the console, if I run python masim.py, we can see that we get time, mid C, three dots, which is pandas way of telling us there's lots of other information inside here, and then an MA8 and an MA16. And one thing we can do is we can add an option into pandas just to tell it to print all of the columns to the display. So let me just add that in at the top here. 
and go back to the console. I run this again, and now you can see that we've got our data frame and we can see that we've got the MA3264 96 and so on. So inside our run then, we've got the price data, we've got all of our MAs. I'll delete this print line here. And that will set up three variables for actually running our simulation. One is to keep track of the best gain we have in pips. We'll just set that to be minus a big number for now, assuming that we're not gonna get that bad in one of the simulations. And then we're going to say what the best MA short was and what the best MA long was. In fact, I'll type short here, otherwise I can't remember what it is. And now all we need to do is we need to loop through all of the long MAs and all of the short MAs. So here we go through, we set underscore MA long as each value in the MA long array and likewise in the short array. We want to avoid the cases where the MA short is actually equal to or bigger than the MA long, otherwise we're not going to get the correct kind of cross evaluated. And then we can do the real meat of this, which is to actually evaluate inside this loop here. So where I'm putting these hashes is where we then want to evaluate the performance of the pair. And to do that, we need yet another function. So above get price data, I'm going to add this function in and it's going to be called evaluate pair. It'll take in our pair instrument class the short and the long MA, so not the array, but just the specific one, 64 or 128 or something like that, and then the price data as well, where we have the columns. The first thing to do is what we saw in the notebook is calculate the deltas, the diff, so the diff, the diff previous, and also see if we actually have a trade. And then we want to create our trades data frame, same as in the notebook again. So wherever is trade is zero, we'll make a copy of that. And then we'll set up calculating the delta and then the pips gain from this. Again, exactly the same code as we had in the notebook. Notebook. And finally, what I'd like to do is actually print some of the results out to the console. Now, I'm just going to hide the files here to make a little bit more space. So we're going to print a line for each evaluation that we run with the name of the pair, the short, the long MA, how many trades we made, and what the sum of the gain was for that particular iteration. And then finally, at the end of the evaluation, we can return the sum of the gain. So we've now written everything we need. We can evaluate a pair, we can load our price data and put all of our moving averages on. The other thing we need to do then is update the code down here inside the loop so we can actually run our evaluation tests. So we're going to say that this, the result, so that was the sum of the gain, is evaluating our pair. We send in our pair, the current short and long moving averages, and take a copy of our price, price data into this as well. Then finally, what we want to say is if the result here was better than the best score, then we'll record the best score, we'll set the best short and the best long, and then we carry on in the loop for the next one. And then finally, after all this, we can print the best score, the best moving average short, and the best moving average long. Actually, before we do that, I haven't put the BMAS short in here. So, so back into the console, we can run masim.py. I'm going to zoom this out very slightly actually, so I've got a bit more room in case it fills the screen, and let's see what happens. And you can see, I hope, hopefully first of all, you can see that it runs extremely quickly. So we've run, I don't know, I would say 17, 18 combinations of moving average cross strategies there. You can see that the shorter ones obviously have more trades. We have 153 trades there with a gain of 380 pips. But you can just see just how quickly we're able to evaluate going back six months or a little bit more than six months in the data on the hour candles, the varying combinations of strategies here. And I'm sure you can get the idea by now. One, this is extremely more effective than doing it by hand, scrolling through charts. And the other thing I'm sure that uh, is probably springing to mind is just all the types of things and tests you can do with all sorts of parameters and things like this to understand what's going on here. Regarding the results themselves, now I've been down this road many, many years ago, so I know what comes out, or I have a certain opinion to this strategy, let's say, and it doesn't surprise me to see the results are generally all over the place. You do see on the pound Japanese yen over recent years, on these shorter crosses where you have like eight crossing 64 or something like this, you see a general positive, I would say, over time period. Once they come into the, the, these ones down here, you just don't. But if you then run this strategy over a few years, then you'll generally come out negative anyway. Going back into the code, for a bit of enthusiasm, let's test this on something else. Let's just go back to the good old uh, Euro US dollar and have a look at the last six months, how that's been on the hour candles. And here we can say we get a far worse result, I would say, than with the pound Japanese yen. We get 387 pips and we got 1,200 as the best one. But the thing that immediately would make me worried about this is one of them occurred on the 864 and the other one occurred on the 32,128. Now the 32,128 was negative on the pound yen and yet it was the best one on the euro US dollar 
and the 864, okay, that was positive on the euro US dollar as well. So immediately, if you were trying to evaluate this as a strategy, an alarm bell should ring here. Doesn't seem to be, it seems to be rather random, let's say, which in effect it is. Just going back into the code, we'll test one more that we know is probably not as good. Let's go for the euro and the good old Swiss franc, which is always a, a pain point with these strategies. I'll just run this again. And now we can see that the best that you would have got on the euro Swiss franc was actually a loss with the 64 and the 256. Okay, so that's it then for this video. I know it was a little bit long, a lot of copying and pasting of code on my side, but it was nothing that we hadn't seen before. But I'm hoping that you've kind of got raised eyebrows if you haven't seen this kind of thing before, but with just how fast these simulations can run and you're realizing just how useful something like this would be. So thanks very much for watching. We're by no means finished. Onwards to the next video.